Hi, I'm Dustin Mason from Performance Lexus in St. Catharines. And today I wanted to go over the highly anticipated Lexus TX. So the TX in the Lexus lineup is to replace the RXL that we saw a number of years ago. The RXL didn't really hit the mark for a few reasons. Um, well, I, I guess it didn't hit the mark in the way that it was marketed to hit the mark. And that mainly came down to the space behind the second row for the passengers and then behind the third row for the cargo space. So this new TX should be able to check some of those boxes. Uh, but before we get into that, make sure you hit like and subscribe for more Lexus related content. Okay, so first thing that you'll see in the commercial is the TX is a lot about family. Now, I remember when I worked at Toyota a number of years ago and when families were shopping for cars and they didn't want a minivan, a lot of times the SUVs just didn't check all the boxes. If you had a couple kids with a couple friends, there was no way you were gonna fit any luggage behind that third row or hockey bags, et cetera, et cetera. But this new TX, it looks like is going to try and tackle those people who probably need, uh, probably, need a minivan but don't want a minivan and that's sort of the whole key here some of the first shots that i see we have some really nice body lines that back end is really squared off and you can see the space between i would call it the the rear doors and the trunk space the fact that there's even a big window there is a great indication that that third row is made to have actual people in it the third row on the rxl in in years past was like if you were at a restaurant and you have to give a buddy a ride home or a couple friends a ride home, they could squeeze back there, but it wasn't super luxurious or comfortable for them for longer than, you know, a short drive. Also, we see that really nice squared off hatch. Uh, I do notice that the wiper is at the bottom of the windshield, which I have some questions about. Why didn't they hide it up, up top like, a, like an RX underneath that little visor? But anyway, it's there, so no big deal. And it's little, it kind of looks like it'll maybe clear some snow or something like that. Uh, this one is the, the TX350, which is the gas version, by the way, and I'll get into the specs in a few minutes. The interior, we're gonna wait and see, because this does share a platform with the Toyota Grand Highlander, and it does look very similar in terms of layout. Now, what you'll remember from my NX versus RAV4 video is even though those two cars share a platform, we still found some really big differences in build quality, interior materials, exterior materials sometimes. So I'm hoping that this is a way that the TX is going to be. But at first blush, I don't know. Come on, Lexus, I'm, I'm really hoping that I'm wrong and that you really did Lexify this interior because it does look like some, you know, injected molded plastic here. Um, the big screen, obviously, that comes standard in most Lexuses now. Mark Levinson sound system uh, that has 21 speakers, which is really good to see. Um, all other than that, there is going to be a plug-in hybrid coming that's gonna have some awesome power numbers. Uh, I don't know when that's coming, but this is a great shot of the, t the TX in a higher package with these really nice new wheels that I haven't seen anything like in the rest of the lineup. They look like they're kind of like a darker chrome finish, multi-spoke, I really like them. I think they're gonna be really, pretty luxurious looking. You can see a lot of the TX is going to be about those passengers in the back. Now I see this little handle over to the right here and it looks like there's a little bit of a charging port there and I can't tell if that is like a lever to fold that seat down. It probably is or it's just the stop for it when it's folded back. I don't know for sure, but you can see that little kid is getting into the back seat. Looks like there's gonna be some leg room for him there too, which is cool. And then we see some other shots of that. So here's a bunch of luggage stored back there with the third row up, you can tell. So we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven suitcases stacked on top of each other, as well as that third row up. So that's going to be huge. It says that there's 57.4 cubic feet in 74 cubic feet with the third row is up, so anyway. And then again, just a leather side shot of how much space is in that third row, which is really good to see. This one has the captain's chair. So like the RXL, there is gonna be a captain's chairs model, a couple of them actually. And a lot of times it's a higher model than the bench. Now what we saw with the RXL was we really thought 
the captain's chairs is gonna be the winner because then you can kind of go through the center seats to the back and it kind of just opens up that cabin a little bit, but it was actually the opposite for the RXL. The bench seat was the winner because then you would just keep that third row down and have three passengers there until you needed to up that third row. Now, another interesting thing about the RXL was when it came out, sometimes people bought it even if they didn't need the third row. And that was just because it was a heavier ride because of the extra weight back there. And it actually was a little bit smoother. I had multiple people that were like, you know, an older couple that didn't have any kids with them or grandkids with them that still would go for the RXL because of the ride. So little, little fun dust and fact there for you. So that's what we see there. In terms of styling, I do see some Lexus, like some Lexus type cues, like those headlights. Um, the grill is a little more subtle than I expected. I think that's a little Toyota-y, but we're gonna see in person and see how that goes. Talks a little bit about the charge point and when we get to the plug-in and what that's going to look like. Um, but you know, the gallery itself, just a couple teasers. We're gonna be seeing these at the dealership soon anyway. So it's not gonna be too bad, uh, too long of a wait before I actually get my hands on one. Ooh, there's the rear controls. So you can get, so you have a couple of USB-Cs, we have some climate controls, which I would expect, and some heated seats. And some of the packages even have cooled seats, just depending like on the higher ones. Some interesting specs about it that I wanna talk about. So we have the TX350, the TX500H, which is kind of like the RX500, where it's like a little bit of a performance-oriented hybrid uh, with a turbocharged engine. And then the TX550H, super excited about that. That's gonna be sick. So the engine on the, the 350 is a 2.4 liter gas turbocharged engine, so it's gonna take premium gas, I'm sure of it. Uh, the 500 is the 2.4 with the hybrid, so just like the 500H in the RX world. And then the 550H says, this is what I hear, 3.5 liter V6 plug-in hybrid electric vehicle. That sounds sick. That's gonna be awesome. So the transmission, eight speed on the 350, six and a CVT on the 550, which is, which is probably, it's probably like the eCVT I'm, I'm assuming, but we'll find out. 275 horsepower in the 350, 366 horsepower in the 550 hybrid, or sorry, the 500 hybrid, and then 406 in that 550 plug-in. That's great. Um, some torque numbers, 409 in the 500H, 317 in the 350, and then the 550 we don't know yet. Um, miles per gallon, because I'm on the American website right now, is 24, 21 miles per gallon in the regular one, 24 miles per gallon in the 500H, and then 30 miles per gallon with a 30 mile EV range on the 550H+. I think the plug-in, it's gonna be great for those shorter trips, but I think the buyer for the plug-in is more gonna be doing it for the power, because 30 miles isn't really, like 33 miles EV range is good, uh, but it's not gonna be enough to someone just jump into that, I think just for the fuel economy or just for that EV por portion. It's gonna be a lot about that power as well. Um, otherwise, here's another quick cartoon look at it. I don't know if this is an official one, because again, I haven't seen these wheels before. I do know in the 350, there's gonna be a premium, a luxury, an ultra luxury, an executive, and then an executive six passenger. And essentially it's gonna be pretty similar to the RX. It is also going to be, on the 500H, there's gonna be an S4 Performance 2, and an S4 Performance 3, and really it's just adding features really similar to what we saw with the RX. So, you know, those top trims are gonna have the Mark Levinson sound system. Um, it says the TX comes standard with a panel roof. A little birdie told me that maybe the first wave of those is not gonna be the case. I think that's gonna be a delay parts wise. So maybe the first wave is gonna be no panel roof. So that's interesting to be able to, uh, to check out. But at the end of the day, this is going to be a family hauler. Hopefully checking those boxes for people that don't wanna to go to a minivan, want an SUV, want an SUV that's bigger than the RX, bigger than the regular Highlander, looking at that Grand Highlander that's very similar to this. And hopefully it's gonna be a good seller. It says that it's going to be our third best seller in Canada, at least next to RX, NX, and then it's gonna be this TX. So that's a big deal, especially in the world of SUVs. Uh, and we're gonna see some things that we expect like Lexus Safety System 3.0. So we're gonna have 
you know, things like the all speed dynamic radar cruise control, lane tracing, my favorite proactive driving assist, which is like a bubble around your car as you drive, like the guy in front of you slows down or the girl in front of you slows down and you slow down and it'll just kind of be a little bit closer to that autonomous driving. So that's gonna be standard in the TX road sign assist, which is also great. Advanced park aids on those higher trim levels as well. So it is gonna be the first Lexus vehicle to be assembled at Toyota Motor Manufacturing Indiana, which is cool. Uh, also the new unified spindle grille prioritizes aerodynamics handling and vehicle stability. So that's interesting that they mentioned that. Obviously a first is that plug-in V6 power plant. And it just says, yeah, enhanced Lexus driving signature fundamentals provide a smooth ride. So anyway, that's the new TX. Please stay tuned for some more videos on this vehicle as it gets closer to launch date and arrives at our dealerships. We're gonna make a big deal out of it. So let me know in the comments below what you wanna see when the TX comes out. If you want me to put my dog Oliver in the back to see if he has enough room, if you want me to fill it with people, fill it with suitcases, put a surfboard back there, maybe bicycle, whatever you're gonna use the TX for, let me know and I can try to do my best at showing that off. Anyway, I'm Dustin Mason. Thank you for watching this video. Make sure you hit like and subscribe. It really does make a difference. And I'll see you in the next video. Thanks.